Hi, welcome to Oma's Kitchen. Oregano. Today in Oma's Kitchen, we're going to make a gluten-free cake that I have named Danny Cake after my friend Danielle, who is gluten intolerant. And this is a cake anyone who is gluten intolerant can make at home. If you've ever had a pineapple upside down cake, you'll understand the concept. For this one, we put the fruit, jam, sugar, and spices in the bottom of the pan. And then we put the cake batter on top. When we're done, when it comes out of the oven, we will flip it over and make an upside down cake with it. This cake mostly includes almond flour and you could make it completely with almond flour. The consistency will come out more like a tray of brownies than a cake. I always include mostly almond flour with just a quarter cup of something else to help make it a little fluffier. This cake has been made many, many times as completely gluten-free. The almond flour and then a little bit of a gluten-free baking mix or a gluten-free flour added in. Today I'm going to make it with mostly almond flour and a little bit of all-purpose flour mixed in. But you can make this completely gluten-free. It's what it's made for. It comes out wonderful, so I recommend you try it. This cake can be made in many different flavors. Today we're going to use about half a pint of fresh blueberries, about half a pint of blueberries that were already frozen, and some black currant jam, all mixed together with some other things for the bottom of the pan. And it will come out as a blueberry black currant Danny cake. Before we make the cake, we're going to make the fruit and glaze for the bottom of the pan. This is my old scribbled on recipe from when I put this recipe together, but the first thing we're going to do is put our spices in here. We're going to start with a whole nutmeg and we're going to use my microplane to grate some nutmeg into the bowl. And we're going to aim at about a half a teaspoon of fresh grated nutmeg. If you use the already grated kind, the already ground kind, back off of the nutmeg a little bit. So that's about half a teaspoon of grated nutmeg. Oh, you can smell it. It smells really good already. <laughs> We're going to use about a half of a teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, so cinnamon. We have cardamom seeds here. Cardamom seeds come in pods. We're going to use six pods. And we're going to leave the seeds whole. Sometimes when I use cardamom, I get the seeds out and I grind them. We're not going to do that today. We're going to actually break the seeds out of the pod by using a butter knife and pushing down on the pod. You see how it breaks open? And then you have the seeds inside. Just try not to get the pod in there. Oh, those smell so good. If you like chai tea, you'll like this cake because these are some of the same spices used in chai tea. We want the blueberry and black currant to shine through and we want the spice to be sort of in the background. So you can see the little cardamom seeds running around in the bowl there. So you can see that. Some of the spices mixed together there. And so all I'm doing is opening the pods and taking the little black seeds and putting them in there without the pods. I didn't cook with cardamom until a few years ago and I just discovered that I love it by trying it for a Middle Eastern recipe that I was making. 
And then I sort of built this cake, the recipe for this cake, using cardamom from the very beginning. Just because it's wonderful. There's our six pods worth of cardamom seeds. Next we will zest. Zest is the outside rind of a citrus. So we're going to zest a lime. You see the beautiful green from the lime down in there. And don't worry, I'll use this lime juice for something else because we just want the zest of the lime. And then we want a little bit of the zest of a lemon as well. So good. And then we're gonna actually cut the lemon in half and we're gonna use a couple teaspoons of lemon juice too. This is why we did the spices first. While our microplane was still dry, we could use it for our fresh ground nutmeg and then use the use it for the wet stuff after that. A couple teaspoons of lemon juice. And I usually just kind of look at either do this into a bowl or into my hand just to keep the seeds from ending up in there. See there's a seed. And we don't want that. I'm going to add one more. Get out of there. Okay, so that's about a couple of teaspoons of lemon juice. Now I'm using whole blueberries and blackcurrant jam. If I were using another fruit, I would cut it up. I want it cut up into a fairly small size for the top of this cake once I flip it over. Powdered sugar two heaping tablespoonfuls of powdered sugar. One. This is gonna help us create our glaze with the fruit. Two. I'm going to mix in the already frozen blueberries, which are a little mushy, which is good. You can use frozen fruit, fresh fruit, jam, jelly, any mixture, but what you wanna end up with is Enough fruit to kind of cover the bottom of your cake tin with the jam, sugar, and spices mixed in. If you've not tried black currants, I recommend it. The problem is they're harder to get as a fresh fruit here. They're a European fruit, and they're an invasive species in America. So you can get golden currants and red currants in America, but black currant bushes tend to take over and we're not allowed to plant them here. So you, if you're gonna use black currant, you have to get it in the form of juice or jam or frozen black currants or dried black currants. But the flavor is so good. I find this in my local grocery store, this brand. But if you look, you can find a black currant jam there somewhere. And you want two heaping tablespoonfuls for this cake. The top of this cake turns out kind of a purpley black color. Now we have all of that mixed together, do a little stirring. So our sugar mixes in with the fruit and the jam and the spices and the zest and oh man, that's wonderful on the top of the cake. Mix it until all of the white bits of sugar are kind of mixed in. And you're gonna set this aside and let it sit for a little bit while you make the cake go. Okay. Look at that. And it smells so good. Okay. I'm going to soften my stick and a half of butter in the microwave for about 20 seconds. I have three eggs here. I'm gonna open those off camera and come back with my three eggs in a bowl just to make sure they're all good and there's no shells mixed in. All right, my three eggs in a bowl, my softened butter, my spatula. So we will mix the three eggs.
three quarters cup of cane sugar. And I'm gonna do a little bit rounded cups, just a little bit of a round on top. Heaping cup. All right. Three quarter cups of cane sugar. And we're gonna mix those two together before we mix anything else in. We want those eggs to get mixed in a little bit fluffy. This is a mix by hand cake. No hand mixer, no stand mixer, just a little elbow grease. Get some air in those eggs, a little bit. A little bubbles on it, that's good. Okay, we're gonna add both flours. So, the almond flour is the first one and it's most of what's in this cake. And we are calling for a cup and a half of almond flour. So let me do that. One cup. And a half a cup. Okay. And then we want one quarter cup of another kind of flour. I'm using all-purpose flour. It'll come out great with a gluten-free baking mix, a gluten-free flour, any other kind of flour besides the almond flour because what it's gonna do is it's gonna fluff the cake up just a little bit and have it be a little less like a brownie. So we're gonna use a quarter cup. I'm using all-purpose flour. And as you can see, this is mostly an almond cake. And we want our butter. And because it has eggs in it, we don't want to use too much baking powder. If you use too much baking powder, your cake will fall in the center. But we do want a tiny bit. We want a quarter teaspoon. So just a little tiny bit of baking powder mixed in. And all that does is help the flour become less dense as well. The most of our leavening in this cake is the eggs. Okay, mix that butter in really good. This is why you melted it in the microwave a little bit. Okay. All that gets mixed in together. You'll see it becomes a batter. Should get nice and smooth for you. things we add are honey and vanilla. Let's do the vanilla first because the honey is just it's gonna make my teaspoon measure kind of sticky. Let's do a teaspoon of the vanilla. Right there. And I have a local honey. This came from a little town about 15 miles from us. I recommend using local honey. Do you know local honey if you eat it and you have allergies to some of the local plants, it can help your body fight off the allergies instead of all the medication that people are on. A little bit of honey, local honey. Okay. Because it comes from the plants around you. So, two teaspoons of honey and a teaspoon of vanilla. And our cake batter is complete. We just need to mix this together. And I will bring my cake pan into the picture here. I have not used this square cake pan. We're going to give this a try today and see how it comes out. Okay. Once we have all of that mixed in, now we're going to assemble our gluten-free Danny cake. So because it's an upside down cake, the fruit goes in the bottom. This is our zest, fruit, and spices mixture. All of that goes in the bottom and try to get as much of the juices as you can out of the bowl. Try not to leave any of that beautiful cardamom behind too. So we're going to spread this out evenly in the bottom of the pan. We want a little bit of that mixture all over the top of the thing. 
And I know the jam wants to be right there in the center, so spread it around a little. So what we have is what looks random, but isn't, the fruit on the top. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, we're going to take the batter and drop it by half of spatula full on top until we get a bunch of them in there. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. This is a very flat cake, so when it comes out, it's about the size of a coffee cake. Okay, and you want to be able to smear the batter together on top. So we're going to fill in all the holes the best we can. I'm going to go to the sides a little bit here too. Because as soon as you go to move the batter, the fruit wants to move with it. So that's why we're making piles on top. So that when we're done, we can just sort of push them together. I would rather spread it out with the spoon than the spatula because it doesn't push as hard as the spatula does. And that's really what we want. It's just a little bit of light pushing to the edge and try to seal the edge a little bit. Spin this around and show it. So you can sort of see what I'm after here. And I have lined this with aluminum foil to see if I can keep it from sticking to the pan. This cake, it comes out tasting beautiful no matter how it comes out of the pan. Sometimes I can get most of the fruit to stick to the cake. Sometimes most of the fruit wants to stick to the pan or the aluminum foil. We'll see how it comes out today. It's wonderful no matter what. So. So we have closed in the topping. And we have mostly sealed it together. So hopefully, we'll get the topping to stay put. So this goes in the oven for 45 minutes, 325 to 330 for an electric oven. For my gas oven, it's 340 degrees for 45 minutes. And then we're going to let it sit in the pan for a couple of minutes. Then we will flip it over onto my tray and see what kind of results we got. All right, in the oven it goes. So it's come out of the oven and I just used a skewer to test it and it's pretty good. So I was just waiting for it to quit sizzling and it's already starting to pull away from the edge a little bit. That's exactly what we want because I'm going to flip this over and hope for the best on my big tray right there. So we're going to see what happens. Now, to do this without burning yourself, you put the plate over top, grab one of your oven mitts, see if I can do it. Oh, I just heard it go. Oh, baby. This is our black currant and blueberry Danny cake. Most of it came out of the pan. Use some that's left over to sort of fill in because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some powdered sugar over the top once it finishes cooling and you have to let it cool. You can't uh, try to put powdered sugar over it while it's still hot because it'll just melt in and that's not the look you're after. So, I would have liked if it all came out of the pan with it, but this works. I mean, really, when you're done, you put the powdered sugar over the top, you can't tell. And it's so cute, and it's so pretty, and it's fluffy, and when you use the gluten-free flour, 
and the almond flour together. It's this beautiful gluten-free cake. You know, I know when people are gluten-free, they feel like they don't get to enjoy the desserts that people grow up with. With the spices and the fruit in here and the fluffy cake underneath, this is such a satisfying dessert. I make it and we aren't gluten-free, so we enjoy it. We enjoy it even without gluten in it. And I make it for us. So you're not missing out on anything. Okay. We're gonna let it finish cooling. We'll put some powdered sugar over the top and then we'll cut a piece so we can show you what it looks like inside. I have some powdered sugar here. I'm gonna actually pour it into here over a bowl because I don't always have the best luck with even powdered sugar for some reason. And then I'm gonna pick that up, shake it over our cake. Yum. I know, right? You know what this tastes like, so you already know it's yummy. Yeah. Gonna get a nice layer of snow on top. And then we'll cut a piece and we'll show you guys what it looks like cut. Look at this edge. Okay, I'll put all that back away when we're done. Thank you for joining me in Oma's Kitchen. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll upload more tasty videos soon. And a special shout out to Moon Pie and Lil Bit. Till next time.